Hello, welcome to the software normalization training video where I'll be explaining how we do software normalization, where you can find it, and how you can best use it. So the software normalization used in Landsuper is something that is exclusive to Landsuper Cloud, so you won't be able to find it on the classic version of Landsuper. Um, and once you're in Cloud, you'll be able to see there all of the software and how we normalize it and use it as well in your reports and your other data too. Now, before I head into Landsuper, um, some background on the software normalization itself. Um, I'm not going to go into all the technical details because that would take too much time, but just to keep it brief, um, we basically use machine learning to normalize the data. So we feed it a lot and a lot of data, um, software name, software version, so that it can learn over time how to basically make or take different names of a similar software and normalize it to a single name of that software or and the same thing for versions. Uh, so that way we're able to get software that just has one consistent name and one consistent version number. So now let's head into Landsuper and take a look at the software normalization itself. So here in Landsuper, we're on the dashboard. I'm going to head over to the software tab that we have where you'll be able to see all of the software and also the normalized version. Now, if you uh, come in, I think automatically it should already have the preview enabled, but if it's not, you can always enable the preview to show or view the uh, normalized software. Um, just to give you an example of what that would look like exactly. Um, obviously here you have just the overview of all your software along with the publisher, the versions, the releases, um, and some additional data. But to take a look at what software normalization really does, we're going to go into here the 7-zip item um, to give you a clear example. So the non-normalized names are listed here. Um, so this is what you would see in your Landsuper Classic uh, view, basically. This is the raw software data that we get. So it contains the name of the product, the version, and also the architecture. So in this case, 64-bit version of the software. Um, and that is kind of taken and brought back to the main item, as you can see here, is just called 7-zip. So in our normalized view of this software, the name would just be reduced back to 7-zip, taking out all of the information that we don't really want there to be. So we don't want the version number or the architecture or anything else really to be in the name field, um, just 7-zip. And then if we head over to versions, um, you can see that we've taken basically the versions, which used to be things like where it also includes the architecture maybe. We've just reduced that back to um, a single version number that's also consistent across all of the versions or all of the different installations of 7-zip. So we have basically the two numbers or four numbers separated by a dot or a period in the middle. Um, that way it is consistent across all installations of 7-zip um, and it's, it's easier to, uh, to use it in reporting and easier to understand in general. Now, some of the obvious benefits of this are that um, when you are doing reporting, it is a lot easier to find the exact software that you're looking for because you do not need to know the exact name. So you don't need to know that, for example. Um, Office, if you're using, um, if you're not in an English speaking country, you're not using, for example, you're using an Office version that has, that is in French. You do not need to know that you need to look for Office with kind of some French language addition added on to the name. Um, or with versions. Um, I've seen it, for example, with Firefox, where you have Firefox, if you just install it regularly with an MSI or an executable from the, from the website, um, you have it with basically two separators or in three parts, the version number. But when you install it through the Microsoft Store, all of a sudden it has a version number with four parts for some reason. Um, and that happens a lot where you have software that you might install uh, slightly differently or just even different version of a software and all of a sudden their version numbering uh, changes or their name, uh, how, it's, how it's kind of set in the software and set in the system changes. And that's something where really software normalization shines is it takes all of that randomness from software names, from software versions, and it brings it back to just something that is normalized, that's consistent, because unfortunately, in the software world, there is no consistency um, amongst naming or versioning. There are some best practices, but not all software publishers follow those. Um, so that basically makes it so that it's required really to do software normalization to then help with reporting uh, specifically and just also readability and uh, ease of finding the specific software itself. 
Um, and with that, I think I've covered everything there is around software normalization for the time being. And you can head over to the next video to learn more.